Hi there, you're watching Alt24 News coming up next in our news program. Countries around the world are putting Western Sahara issue on the top of their agendas. Algeria and South Africa issued a joint statement to support the Sahrawi cause. In our news file, we're tackling migrant crisis issue and what's the solution to their ongoing problems? And finally, three men have been put under arrest after a man was killed in a car explosion outside Liverpool Women's Hospital. First in our top stories, lots of countries around the world are putting Western Sahara issue on the top of their agendas. Left groups in European Parliament issued a report on European companies active in Western Sahara, while Algeria and South Africa issued a joint statement to support the Sahrawi cause. Ayadi Usama reports. A report has been released by the left group of the European Union on the foreign companies active in Western Sahara's territories. The report was dedicated to the violation of international laws of these companies in Western Sahara and considered their acts as war crimes as they illegally exploit the natural resources of the country. Most of the companies in Western Sahara are French, Spanish and German, and their activities are mostly centered on the most important sectors of the Saharan economy, including renewable energy, agriculture and marine resources. On the African level, Algeria and South Africa have issued a joint statement on Western Sahara cause. Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Ramtan Lamamra, and South African Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Nali Dipandor, called for coordination between the African Union and the UN envoy in order to work on the support of the independence of the last colony in the African continent. This comes during the escalated raw and military confrontations between the Sahrawi forces and Moroccan forces and repeated clashes between the two countries' armies. Vows by the Sahrawi president were clear against the Moroccan army as he stressed that his army is well trained and fully operational and will not cease until they free their territories from Moroccan occupation. To Libya, where an official from the Electoral Commission declared that Saif al-Islam, Gaddafi's son of Libya's former leader, Muammar Gaddafi, has registered as a presidential candidate for the country's December election. Marwa reports. A statement said by an official from the Electoral Commission, Saif al-Islam al-Gaddafi submitted his candidacy for the presidential election to the High National Electoral Commission office in the southern city of Sabha. A footage of Gaddafi's son virally shared on social media portrays him with a grey beard, glasses, a traditional brown robe and a turban, signing documents at the registration office in the southern town of Sebha. Educated at the London School of Economics and a fluent English speaker, Saif al-Islam Gaddafi was once seen by many governments as the acceptable, western-friendly face of Libya and a possible heir seemingly. But when the uprising broke out in 2011 against Muammar Gaddafi's long rule, Saif al-Islam immediately chose family and clan loyalties over his many friendships in the West, telling news agencies, quote, we fight here in Libya, we die here in Libya, end quote. Despite the public backing of most Libyan factions and foreign powers for elections on December 24th, the vote is still in doubt as revile entities dispute over the rules and schedule. A major conference in Paris agreed to sanction those who disrupt or prevent the vote, but there is still no agreement on rules to govern who should be able to run. The elections are predicted as a key moment in a United Nations-backed peace process to end a decade violent chaos that has drawn in regional powers since the 2011 NATO-backed uprising against Muammar Gaddafi. The head of the Libyan Presidential Council, Mohammed al Menfi, told Reuters that there are serious steps being taken into Libya towards settlement regarding the elections scheduled for next December. Let's have a listen. We must be optimistic and think that the elections will be on time with the agreement of Libyans. That is an important matter. The truth is, regarding the possibility of there not being consensus, we are currently making sure there is consensus about having elections on time. 
It is expected that the European Union foreign ministers will meet today with the aim of expanding the sanctions imposed on Belarus against the backdrop of the refugee crisis on its border with Poland, while the Vice President of the European Commission will visit Baghdad to discuss migrant crisis. Zara Forgeni reports. An expected meeting of the European Union foreign ministers today aims to expand the sanctions imposed on Belarus due to the abuses approved by President Lukashenko regarding the crisis of asylum seekers on its borders with Poland. It is expected to coincide with the visit of the European Commission's vice president to Baghdad to discuss the migrants' crisis. A crisis was at the center of the talks of the European Union's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, with Belarusian foreign minister, Vladimir Mackay, which Borrell confirmed in a tweet in which he indicated that the current situation of refugees on the border between Belarus and Poland is unacceptable and must end. While international human rights voices reject the use of people as weapons, Germany has deployed additional forces along its borders due to the entry of more than 700 refugees who came through the territory of Belarus since the beginning of this month. The United States, through its Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, renewed its position in support of Poland in the face of what he called the absurd exploitation of migrants, while emphasizing that Washington, Warsaw and the Allies agree that Moscow will pay what they described as a heavy price for its military aggression and malign activities in the region. More than 4,500 asylum seekers are still moving from one place to another through the border forests between Poland and Belarus in search of an exit to reach Europe to escape their difficult living conditions. As for Poland, it confirmed that a group of 50 refugees had crossed the Polish border and that the police were constantly searching for them. On the other hand, the Iraqi Minister of Foreign Affairs, Fouad Hussein, announced the launching of the first exceptional flight to voluntarily return immigrants stuck at the Belarusian-Polish border on the 18th of the current month. This comes after thousands of illegal immigrants attempted to cross the Polish border with Belarus. More insights in this report. The Iraqi Ministry of Foreign Affairs revealed that the first return flight for Iraqi migrants from Belarus is scheduled on the 18th of this month. Ministry spokesman Ahmed Sahaf said in a press statement that Iraq will organize a trip for those wishing to return voluntarily on the 18th of this month and emphasized that the Iraqi government supports the return of migrants. The decision has been taken according to the development in the migrant crisis. It's reported that the crisis has taken on a political turn and their illegal granting of entry visa to Belarus, which exposes Iraqi fragile groups to the danger of human trafficking networks. The Iraqi Ministry of Foreign Affairs worked to devote the voluntary return of Iraqi immigrants, and there are political and diplomatic dialogues now taking place with Iraq's partners and friends in the European Union. We are coordinating nationally with the Ministry of Transport and the Ministry of Migration and Displacement to support the voluntary return by urgently conducting emergency evacuation flights. The Polish-Belarus border witnessed tension recently after thousands of illegal immigrants attempted to cross it toward Poland. As an attempt to protect the Iraqi citizens from human trafficking networks through Belarus and Poland, the Iraqi Ministry of Foreign Affairs has temporarily withdrawn the work permit of the Belarusian Honorary Consul in Baghdad. And to talk more about refugee crisis, I'm joined live via phone by Dr. Mahfoud Ali Zoui, Algerian author and academic lecturer at Galma University. Well, first of all, why do you think migrant crisis comes to the surface every time here and there? Good afternoon and thank you so much for having me. Uh, well, uh, let's first acknowledge the fact that this cross-border uh, migration and refugee crisis is no longer restricted to the humanitarian dimension. So to better understand the elements surrounding the crisis, we should put it in the broader framework, which comprises usually economic, political, and even uh, geopolitical aspects. Uh, as a matter of fact, the refugee issue has been politicized over the last decade or so. Uh, coming back to your question, the current crisis in the borders between Belarus and Poland has to do more with the increased tension between Russia and its allies on the one hand and the European Union and the United States on the other hand. 
few days ago, the chief of staff of the British Armed Forces said openly that a war between Russia and the West is now closer than any time since the Cold War crisis. Uh, also, the, the fact that winter is approaching now and it is getting colder uh, intensifies the humanitarian crisis, making it a good opportunity for political manipulation and bargaining. Indeed, uh, Dr. Mahfoud, a humanitarian crisis, a political one. What's your reading to the fact that the EU and Western powers are not trying to find an immediate solution to the problem of the migrant crisis? Do you we need an international convention to protect refugees? Well, uh, as I already mentioned, illegal immigration and the refugee crisis constitutes a multidimensional challenge of international nature. It is true that the international instrumentalities and the European Union can do better to handle at least the humanitarian aspect of the crisis. Uh, we know that from reports by humanitarian bodies that uh, till now uh, more than 10 refugees died in the borders between Belarus and, uh, and Poland. They can do better away from the political considerations. But the problem needs long-term radical solutions that would imply uh, the European Union and the great powers supporting stability and economic development in countries of the Middle East and Africa, where the majority of refugees usually hail from, which is unfortunately not always the case. Indeed. Uh, finally, just a word about why is the migrant crisis turning to an economic problem within the EU countries, especially after Belarus threats to cut gas supply to EU? Exactly. Well, remember what happened last year in the borders between Turkey and Greece and Bulgaria when the Turkish authorities declared that they would not prevent refugees wanting to cross the border towards Europe, which caused at the time a political, real political crisis between Turkey and the European Union. Uh, in my view, it's a similar scenario is taking place these days in the borders between Belarus and Poland, with the European Union officials uh, openly accusing the Belarusian authorities of orchestrating the entire refugee crisis in retaliation against the waves of European sanctions against the ruling regime in Belarus, which is, of course, considering autocratic under the President Alexander Lukashenko. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mahfoud Ali Zoui, Algerian author and academic lecturer at Gelma University. You joined us live via phone. And moving on now to another story where three men have been put under arrest after a man was killed in a car explosion outside Liverpool Women's Hospital. The passenger was declared dead at the scene and another one was injured. Let's follow this report. A car explosion killed one person and left another injured near Liverpool Women's Hospital. The male passenger of the car was declared dead at the scene and is yet to be formally identified. The driver, also a man, remains in hospital in a stable condition. Authorities are keeping an open mind and counter-terror officers are leading the investigation to understand the circumstances of the explosion in a city that hasn't witnessed such incidents for decades. We are keeping an open mind as to what caused the explosion, but given how it has happened and out of caution, counter-terrorism police are leading the investigation supported by Merseyside Police. In a tweet released through Greater Manchester Police, Merseyside Police said three men aged 29, 26 and 21 have been arrested in the Kensington area of Liverpool under the Terrorism Act. Police continues the investigation. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, said his thoughts are with those affected by the awful incident and thanked the emergency services for their response. The taxi carrying the two victims pulled up just before 11 a.m. at local time as a national two-minute silence for Remembrance Sunday was about to begin and it exploded. It is not yet known if there is a connection between the timing of the incident and the fact it occurred on Remembrance Sunday. Algeria entered the Dubai Expo 2020 with a unique presence, different from previous exhibitions, the largest in the history of its participation in international exhibitions. The Algeria Pavilion is a new platform for promoting the country's image and for the incentives it offers to foreign investors. Zara Virginia reports. With a pavilion that mixes both tradition and modernity, 
Algeria records its largest participation in the biggest economic event, Dubai Expo 2020. Algeria's heritage identity is prepared in all its details, just as the pavilion seeks to fuse the past with the future. Algeria is like a beautiful, beautiful country. Yes, you have, you have rich culture. You have this, like, what are these carpets and all this? Are these your traditional dresses? Yes. It's, it looks glamorous, by the way. And also those, what are these? What do you call this one? Like, it's antiques. A unique mixture that shows visitors the depth of Algerian history and the aspirations for a promising future in an exceptional trip that impresses many visitors to the Dubai Expo 2020. Algeria is famous for its dates and its large desert. We have studied the history of Algeria in Iraq since childhood. A journey through history showcases Algerian traditional heritage, well-preserved and rooted in these skilled handicrafts that have attracted many interested and curious visitors. When you enter, the Algerians show you the numerous and diverse civilizations that exist in Algeria, as well as the distinguished history. For the first time in the history of its participation in such a major international exhibition, Algeria marks a distinguished presence at Expo 2020, which is an exceptional opportunity to return to the most prominent international economic forum after COVID-19 pandemic that has strongly hit the world's economy. Within the same file, Algerian Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman affirmed that Algeria has embarked on important and unprecedented political and economic reforms in an effort to promote investment and advance all sectors. Let's have a listen. The Algerian pavilion at the exhibition, which is located in the transitional area, takes its visitors in a life journey from the south to the north, shedding the light on very important historical stations that reflect the anthropological deepness of Algeria. Algeria that witnessed the dawn of humanity, incubating in Ain Boucherit a 2.4 million year old artifact and stone tool to truly be the cradle of humanity. The pavilion also highlights Algeria's most important touristic sites and locations, and also its diversity of cultural and artistic expressions, which enriches the cultural and tourism radiation, not only by promoting its image, but also contributing in the success of Dubai exhibition. Algerian Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman considered as well that the Algerian pavilion is too large to be summarized as a site for cultural and tourism radiation, but rather to contribute to highlight name the prospects and aspirations of Algerians for the future. Let's have a listen together. My country, Algeria, has embarked on unprecedented political and economic reforms under the leadership of the President of the Republic, Abdelmajid Tebboune, using both material and human resources in order to promote investment, develop the economy, and advance all sectors in order to reach its strategic goals focusing on strategic partners such as the United Arab Emirates that has diverse and rich economic relations with Algeria. Even as coal-dependent countries lodged last-minute objections, the UN climate talks finished with a deal that for the first time called out fossil fuels as the primary cause of global warming. Marwa reports. While the deal received applause for keeping the possibility of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius alive, many of the nearly 200 national delegations wished they had achieved more. The two-week conference in Scotland achieved a major victory in addressing the regulations concerning carbon markets, but it did nothing to ease vulnerable countries' concerns about long-promised climate funding from rich nations. Reaching a deal was always a matter of balancing the demands of climate-vulnerable nations, big industrial powers and those like India and China depending on fossil fuel to lift their economies and populations out of poverty. I also understand the, the deep disappointment. But I think, as you have noted, it's also vital that we um, protect this package. The agreement promised to double adaptations funds by 2025, yet there are no guarantees, after which countries failed to reach a 2020 deadline for the payments. 
A United Nations committee will report next year on progress toward providing the $100 billion per year in promised climate funding. The deal left many vulnerable countries desperate despite a promise made in the 1992 United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which nations have resisted assuming financial responsibility for years for emissions which have caused climate change as they have climate to economic prosperity. While the Glasgow Agreement outlined a roadmap to tackling the problem by establishing a new secretariat dedicated to the issue, vulnerable countries complained that this was the bare minimum of responsibility. And finally, with some sports news, Spain, Serbia and Croatia are heading to next year's World Cup, while Sweden, Portugal and Russia aren't. Well, Abdelrahim Kashor reports. Portugal's capital last night witnessed a dramatic show with the shocking ending that could cause a heart attack to the stands over the stadium. Portugal was in a strong position when Renato Sanchez scored the opening goal after just two minutes against Serbia. But Dusan Tadic kept Serbia in the game with an equalizer in the 33rd. But the closure point Alexander Mitrovic the 90th minute had left Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal stand in a 2-1 win for Serbia in Lisbon, which gave Serbia an automatic qualifying spot on the World Cup in Qatar. Portugal still has a chance to qualify, but it must navigate a 14 bracket in the playoffs in March. All of the team which booked the World Cup place in Europe on Sunday did so with the dramatic show late goals. Spain only needed a draw in its last game against Sweden to qualify, but Alvaro Morata made sure in the 86th minute with the only goal to win the lift. The veteran Sweden starts. Latin Ibrahimovic hopes of another World Cup appearance depending on the playoffs. Croatia lead the siege to Russia's goal and water locked field quickly turning in into a swamp and was finally rewarded when Russian defender scored an 81st minute own goal enough for one win to Croatia. Russia two heads to the playoffs. We start on March 24 and we sort 12 teams out of the 10. And now let's have a look again to our main headlines. Countries around the world are putting Western Sahara issue on the top of their agenda. Algeria and South Africa issued a joint statement to support the Sahrawi issue. And in our news file, we tackled migrant crisis issue and solutions to their ongoing problems. And finally, three men have been put under arrest after men were killed in a car explosion outside Liverpool Women's Hospital. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.